Hello and welcome back to the Spotlight Games podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the verdict in the Microsoft FTC trial. A new Black Panther game has been announced. And later this year, Baldur's Gate 3 is going to let us fuck a bear. So yeah, brother, let's I guess do it's it. up to you if you want to listen to the rest of this goddamn show. But I'm your host, Patrick. Joining me, as always, my sweet dumpster boy, Cayman Darty. Cayman, how are you? Patrick, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I found out you can fuck a bear in a video game. So <laughs> what, <laughs> else are, what else are we looking for, brother? I mean, truly, what else are we looking for? We got a lot of video game stuff to talk about because this is the Spotlight Games podcast where each week we spotlight the latest and the greatest in the world of video games. You can get it by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Spotlight Games Pod or by searching for Spotlight Games in your favorite podcast app. And hey, you can be on the show by tuning in as we record live Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv slash spotlight games pod so be sure to follow us there so that you're notified when we go live so you can be part of the conversation came in mm. before the show we were chatting we both we all oh, were both so sleepy we're so oh, oh i'm just so tired i've had such a long day that light comes on i'm feeling an energy mm. talking with you about video games my brother <laughs> brother <laughs> uh <laughs> feeling yeah man i'm I'm rolling on a lot of hours of work and not a lot of hours of sleep. And uh, uh, well, hopefully today's discussion won't put you or the audience to sleep. Mm. Uh, there's just there's so much to discuss. But before we do any of that, came in. I know you've been a busy boy. You've been buzz mm. buzzing around in your new home and with your job. Mm. Have you been playing any video games that you want to talk about? Yeah, I mean, I've been playing Final Fantasy 16 some yep. more not not a ton i i feel bad i feel like i haven't really gotten a, a ton into it i really wanted to get back into diablo and try to finish up the campaign before july 20th and i still have time i still got time back still I, got time. Still, I still got time you okay? still got time i still got i'm at the very end of the game so i got to figure out how to get that accomplished before season one uh diablo season one launches because i am excited about that patrick yeah so um i we that is a little side note we got other things we're gonna talk about today but the whole crux of season one of Diablo, and this is something I know we've discussed. Um, you have to re-roll a character. Every yeah. Time. What, are, what do you think about that? Honestly, Patrick, I love the idea. Yeah. Cause here, my problem with Diablo three was I had spent so much time running riffs with my crusader that I was so comfortable with the build that I did not want to change. I was like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to keep, I don't want to, I don't want to do No, I'd be like, this is my main character. I don't want to, go and do anyone else i didn't care about doing anything else sure so i never switched it up the the idea of forcing me to play as new characters every time the hope is is that every season that i'll jump in as a new character get a new feel do something a little bit different will i play as a barbarian again N no certainly not certainly you'd not, be a fool too am i excited to give a, a whiz going as a necromancer Better fucking believe I am. You better fucking believe it, brother. <laughs> yeah, brother. Um, so I'm excited about that. But but what I have been playing, uh, Final Fantasy 16, something I don't think we talked about that was like my one complaint about the game was where I was in the game, I felt like the, the side quests were lacking. Some of mm. them towards the end of like the chapter two, I would you would probably call it. Um, we're getting a little bit better, telling a little bit better stories, things like sure. that chapter basically when you get to like that you're three quarters of the way through the game part that 30 percent, 35 percent mark the game really opens up and that's what i was looking for because cool. final fantasy does that like that's what i love about final fantasy is when the game opens up sure the side quests are becoming way more interesting way more fun to complete uh there's bounty quests that you can do that are a shit ton of fun where you get to fight like more powerful unique enemies and it really puts your you know your combat abilities to the test uh really enjoyed that so there are a lot of things that i think like once the game does open up that it gets if you are a side quest person like gets better um and so i've been enjoying it our, our listener show friend nick swalski messaged me and asked me if i got into a certain fight and i said i hadn't yet uh, but from the way that conversation was going it seems like i'm in for a fucking hell of a time uh, I've heard a lot there. about like later game stuff, just yeah. like only as like conceptual business. Like I, 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 it seems like there's a lot of crazy hype shit to mm -hmm. expect. And I, yeah, I've definitely not gotten there myself. So, um, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I agree with you on the side quest thing with Final Fantasy. I've actually, I've not played Final Fantasy um, very much since 
last recording actually mm-hmm. and speaking of the devil sweet skate 101 in the chat giving us a little 101 on the sweet squeet the sweet squeet i said uh hey nick um I've not played very much since last week, but there were two th- two things that I, I didn't mention last time we spoke. Uh, that was one of them, actually, the side quest business. Mm-hmm. I, I align with you there, and I have not gotten to the point where it's, it's kind of opened up yet. Second thing, something that I've never really noticed in games before that this game did is really, really bad. Um, what do you call it when the camera moves? Uh, oh, mo- uh, motion, the blur? motion blur. Okay, the motion blur was offensive. It was so do bad. You, they patched it, and so they patched yes. it. Uh, they patched it. Oh, um, so actually, I think I played so a little nice. bit of Final Fantasy after we recorded last week, but that was the last time I played it. So they patched it, turned that shit completely off. Amazing night and day, Amazing. complete night and day difference. Well, I like I I I get that there's like a moment there where they're like, yeah, this is great. And then it comes out, people are like, oh, God, I'm going to throw up. And I'm not one of those people that, like, gets motion sickness like that. Sure. Like, I, my favorite story of all time is someone, I saw someone post about how if they can't play a game at 250 frames per second, they get nauseous. And I was like, <laughs> motherfucker, you can't see real yeah. life in 250 frames. Get fucked. Um, but I will say, though, it, it didn't make me sick, but it was very, not disorienting, it was almost frustrating i guess it was just like uh-huh. what, what was the thought process here so the patch i turned it i didn't turn it completely off i turned it down like to like the three quarter mark okay and it's just slight there and the slight there was totally fine i was like yeah. this actually looks really good like that um feels more immersive like that but like sure. full-blown motion bur- blur good god see that and that's it's funny i have it having it completely off i still feel like there is native motion blur happening like i still feel like really? I'm, I'm getting some even though i turned sure. it to zero uh and that's like that's enough for me um because yeah. yeah i'm i'm not the kind of person that yeah i'm not this fucking dork that you were talking about but it was like it was bothering my eyes. Like I, I that motion blur would it mm. wasn't making me nauseous, but I was like, it's it's as if I'm not wearing my glasses when I'm playing the game. And anytime I turn the camera, because it's just so like disorienting. Mm-hmm. Um, so that I'm glad that that's been fixed. But Cayman, last week on the show, you gave a shout out to one of the, a friend of the show, Lucas, yeah. for a game he had been playing, Dave the Diver, and it's a game that I had heard heard tell of. I had heard some some rumblings, some tumblings, mm-hmm. if it, if you were, if you will, if you would, if you will. I will, and I would. And so, what did I do? Came in, I grabbed my Steam Deck, I dusted it off. I had to, I had to go to the store buy a dust, a duster. Please tell me you literally had to do that exact thing. I had to buy a duster and some four oh nine. Spray that shit. Get the dust off of my fucking little Steam Deck, baby. Bought Dave the Diver for $17.99. It was on sale, 10% off. And when I tell you I've barely put that thing down since last week, Cayman, according to my Steam Deck, now I I don't feel like this is true, but if it wasn't true, the number would be so much bigger. Apparently, I've put 26 hours into this game since last week. Holy shit. And so like, part of me was like, is it counting like downtime? But if it was counting downtime, it'd be like, 400 hours or something like however many hours are in a week um that's not 400 but it'd be it more than 26 more than 26 yeah at. that's true and so apparently i've played 26 hours of dave the diver and this game is a breath of fresh fucking air came in that's i awesome, right man. now it's only on pc but i cannot wait for it to come to switch for all of our listeners that have a switch because katie elliot i'm talking to you uh like fucking who else terry pendleton if you're in the chat i'm talking to you everybody that listens to this podcast. Kayla, if you're listening, Jerrica, if you're listening, Rose, my wife, who is not listening right now, everyone that listens to this podcast regularly would like Dave, the diver, because we all kind of vibe in some way, shape or form with that kind of cozy game. Mm. But it is, it is, I would say Stardew Valley is like on a spectrum of cozy it leans toward the the not cozy because there is like a fair amount of combat in it. The and chaotic like dungeon diving. Cozy. It's it, it's like chaotic cozy. Dave sure. the Diver is like chaotic cozy, and okay. there like there's there's like boss fights. Like there there's definitely a lot more combat than a normal cozy game for sure. But this loop I can't get enough of of diving down in the day, getting my fish, getting my sharks, getting my fucking uh 
little sea creatures, bringing them up at nighttime and running a sushi restaurant. And that's fucking amazing. I, I'm like fucking four stars Michelin restaurant or some shit right now. Like I'm, I'm making like 10 K a night, which mm. Lucas is probably like laughing, probably breaking in like two fifty K a night or some shit. I don't know. But it also, the pacing of it is immaculate. Like any, mm. every time you finish something, it immediately gives you like the next thing that, which like, Oh sure. Like all video games do this, but in a game like this, that in a way kind of lacks a structure, like in theory, you could just, Every day, go down, get your fish, come up and serve your sushi and just do that on repeat. You don't necessarily have to do the other stuff, but it, it at, at a very good pace gives you new stuff to do. Um, and it, the at this point, the game is like so open. Like it, at first, it seemed like it was very kind of surface level. I'm just diving down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you you upgrade your suit, you upgrade like the weight you can carry. You like you can get a, like a basically a submersible god rest and it just are i don't know I'm, billionaires <laughs> i'm just i'm having a great time with it so shout out to lucas for uh for telling you all about that game so that you got me excited about it but yeah it's it's a lot of fun and i think um i think a lot of people that listen to the show would like it and now you might be sitting there wondering cayman or audience member that i love so dearly would you say this is a game of the year contender i don't think so mm. but that doesn't mean it's not fucking great and mm -hmm. and and also I would I would venture to wager okay. you throw this game in a different year. You throw this game in let's say 2021, Cayman. Oh, so you're talking about better. when you're throwing it up against Death Loop and it takes two. Yeah. Okay. You're throwing it up against fucking uh God of War Ragnarok last year. God, it's, it's you're not, throwing it up good. against Elden Ring. Uh, 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 yeah, it's it's a really good game. Um, I I'm That's excited awesome. to see like if they're gonna be adding like more content. Not that I mean I'm I still have a fair amount to go. I think it's from what I found online, it's seven chapters. I'm on chapter five, but it's kind of like go at your own pace in a way. Like I could mm -hmm. be on chapter five for the next thirty hours if I wanted. Sure. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm having a great time. I also think um, yeah, whenever it does come to consoles, I think Sid's gonna fuck with yeah. dave the diver yeah uh, it sounds like it did i do want to give a quick shout out to um did you ever play the game my time at porsche i did rose loved my time at porsche um so i played a little bit of it so sid was big it's another one of those stardew valley-esque farm sim games with combat um well the devs behind my time at porsche uh just actually announced their release date for this their sequel it's a pseudo sequel uh sandrock is that what it's called yeah my time at sandrock now has a release date it was supposed to be summer of 2023 but we are in summer and the game's not here so obviously it's going to come september 26th how about that so if you are one of those cozy gamers who likes the chaotic cozy uh i would highly recommend if you haven't played my time at porsche it's a really fun game it's a little ugly uh, a little buggy but uh still fun and uh my time at sand rock it looks like they've they have learned from their mistakes so excited to see that game launch in september yeah i'm excited to see that too it's a shame that they're fucking liars though yeah september 26th that's fall so, baby that's fall baby I, that's is fall, it baby. though it is when september is, when... i believe it's the 23rd is when oh. the, the season changes really so okay. i mean don't get me wrong it's pretty close it's pretty well, i mean i feel like at this point in the like the mid august to like the first day of October. That's autumn. Sure. I mean, also, uh, we are quickly approaching a world in which every day is summer. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're, dude, we're not uh, The world's on fire. The world's on fire. Um, and you know what, Cayman? It might be more on fire in the coming weeks, months, and years because mm. news broke today. Jeez. That Microsoft has won the trial against the FTC. A judge ruled in favor of Microsoft. I'm pulling from Taylor Lyles and Wesley Yin Pool at IGN. They write as such. The waiting is over, and we have a decision on the recent trial between the Federal Trade Commission, also known as the FTC, is and that Microsoft. That is what they're known. Yeah. Judge Jacqueline Scott Corley has ruled in favor of Microsoft denying the FTC's preliminary injunction request. Quote, Microsoft's acquisition of Activision, 
That's a nice little slant rhyme. Acquisition huh. Activision has mm. been described as the largest in tech history. It deserves scrutiny. That scrutiny has paid off. Microsoft has committed in writing in public and in court to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation for 10 years on parity with Xbox. It made an agreement with Nintendo to bring Call of Duty to Switch and okay. it entered <laughs> <laughs> and sure. it entered uh, several agreements to for the first time bring Activision's content 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 to several cloud gaming services. This court's responsibility in this case is narrow. It is to decide if Notwithstanding these current circumstances, the merger should be halted, perhaps even terminated, pending resolution of the FTC administration, administrative, excuse me, action. <clears throat> For the reasons explained, the court finds the FTC has not shown a likelihood it will prevail on its claim. This particular vertical merger in this specific industry may substantially lessen competition. To the contrary, the record evidence points to more consumer access to Call of Duty and other Activision content. The motion for a pre preliminary injunction is therefore, in all caps, denied. End yeah. quote. In a statement issued to IGN, FTC spokesperson Douglas Farrar said, quote, we are disappointed in this outcome given the clear threat this merger poses to open competition in cloud gaming, subscription services, and consoles. In the coming days, we'll be announcing our next step to continue our fight to preserve competition and protect consumers. Douglas, I appreciate it, but you lost, buddy. Yeah, brother. It's game over, brother. Game over, um, brother. So... came in uh, there was a lot of legal jargon there was a lot of slant a lot rhyming legalese there's it's taking place there but ultimately the united states governing body has decided there is no issue with this now that that a little bit later in the article we can pull in later europe still technically could block it on their soil from the cma but for all intents and purposes microsoft wins mm -hmm. Your initial thoughts. Initial thoughts. Initial thoughts. Initial thoughts. Um, as someone who owns an Xbox, someone who owns a PlayStation and owns a Switch, I don't really give a shit, to be completely honest with you, about this merger. A lot of the games that they release, like I wouldn't play. Sure. Anyway, doesn't like, move I'm the not... needle for you. Yeah, no, and it's this is not like, oh god, I, I need to go upgrade my Xbox. Like, no, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't care about playing Call of Duty. And and truthfully, it is like a lot of I think what a lot of this is is more of like the mobile game portion yeah. of this is um I think is is what a lot of the FTC was more concerned about, and also. They were very concerned about the aspect of cloud gaming and the future of that and the fact that Microsoft, for the most part, at this point, really has not a monopoly on cloud gaming, but really has a, Boy, a, they a, have a leg up, strong headlock on it. Okay. Yeah. And that is concern. That that part is concerning. That's that you are going to eliminate competition from trying to enter the field. Um, here, here, here's the one thing I will say. And this is something we've talked about this with Sony too, with uh, with Sony's successes with the PlayStation 4 compared to Xbox. And what's kind of led us to this moment was that is Sony going to become complacent with their lead in the video game sphere in terms of like the big two consoles? And will that complacency lead to just a poor gaming experience? Um, I think you can think of something like DC Marvel, right? Like DC just kept putting out dog shit movies. Marvel just kept putting banger after banger after banger. But now as we're starting to see, one, DC still can't make a good movie, but Marvel is now also just like, it doesn't matter. We have such a strong hold on this, like on the superhero movie market that sure. we're just going to keep putting out crap, right? So my thing is, and this is where I think I, I get a little bit concerned is like, are we going to get to a point where Microsoft essentially just makes shitty products for it? all of these things that they've just bought? Because, you know, why not? Right. And, and, and there's that there's, there's also, I think the other initial thought, and I feel like I'm getting a little too far in deep thought. Now um, there will be a retaliation. Like Sony will retaliate. What do you think that looks like? 
I stand by my prediction that by the end of the year, there's a good chance we will hear. If not, we will see it in full force. We will start seeing rumblings that Sony buy Square Enix. And that is not good for anybody. Sure. And that's the thing is, and that's what I think the problem that I had from the get go was not that I care that Microsoft has full and they can say, and there's historical evidence of companies who've gone and been like, this will not change a thing. Think about Ticketmaster buying Live Nation. They said the exact same thing in writing. In writing. They said the same thing, that this would not affect how concerts work or anything. Everyone hates Ticketmaster now, and there's a reason. It's because they wrote that they weren't going to do something, and then they immediately turned around and did the complete opposite. And guess what? Once the deal is done, there's no legal ramifications against them. Sure. And so there is a worry that, like, that could potentially happen that, that all of that that you wrote down means jack fuck all but i think for me the biggest issue is is that sony will retaliate there is not a world in which sony doesn't go out and go well if, if microsoft can do this i'm we're gonna do it too and then we start consolidating huge properties to individual consoles and then that's that back and forth will continue until it's you either you have to pick one or the other and it's going to end up hurting consumers even though it doesn't seem like this does right now like in the long run this will end up hurting consumers and i think because of the console war people don't see that they just see my sides winning and that's all that matters sure. and ultimately we're all going to end up losing when this all finally when when the dust finally settles and the truth is i don't think the dust ever will settle sure i think this back and forth is going to continue for the next 20 years yeah until we're all blocked off you know it's funny so the the square enix thing you you've been saying that and it's not that i disagreed it's just i've always kind of felt that sony's market value is so much smaller than microsoft's that that like it wouldn't be comparable, but I just did some math because I'm a math boy came in. Mm-hmm. According to Google, Sony's value as a company is $110 billion. And according to Google, Microsoft's is $2.5 trillion. Granted, Microsoft, I mean, they have Microsoft Windows, like it's such a bigger company. Yeah. So at first I'm like, oh yeah, I'm definitely right. But 69 billion, that was the the value of Activision Blizzard that they spent, right? It was seven, no, it was more than, it was like, I remember it was, it was or maybe 72 72 so, but close so i'm close. Ludicrous close number yeah that is point so it's 4.5 percent of their value is what they spent on on activision blizzard square is three percent of sony's value they're they're 5.3 billion dollars in value it's i'm rounding up it's it's 2.7 percent but it's a lot closer of a of a kind of a size thing than i thought initially so i i mean i think the shoe does fit and i think Square does bring a lot of, I mean, Final Fantasy, obviously, right? I mean, it's already, right? I mean, this one is is a um, it, an exclusive, it, yeah, but I there's think, so much more than just Final Fantasy from yeah. Square. And I think the reason that I lean on Square more than something like Capcom, and because Capcom's also another one that, like, very well, Sony could very well pick up Capcom. I, I don't think Capcom makes as much sense in my head is, like, what does Sony, or what does Square Enix, the games they make, where their biggest franchises where do people play those games almost exclusively on sony's platforms so it makes more sense for them to pick up something like square enix and the relationship's already there whereas it's true and i think uh, uh, ryan said this in the in his deposition where he said that like yeah it made sense for for microsoft to go after the one thing that xbox is known for and that's first person shooters and frat boy games. He didn't say that part, but that's true. Sure, right. Sure. I'm sorry. Call of Duty is a frat boy game. If you're a Call of Duty fan, cool. I have fun. Whatever. Video games are awesome, but um, you know, go enjoy your Keystone life, brother. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's interesting to me. It's something that I hadn't actually thought of until earlier today. Um, what about like because we've been talking for so long about this acquisition, and then I kind of sat down and thought about it. I was like, you know. I don't give a shit about really any Activision Blizzard games. I, I'm really liking Diablo 4, but like when you think of their major franchises, it's Call of Duty, it's Diablo, it's Warcraft, it's Starcraft, and it's all the mobile shit by way of King. So you, you got your Candy Crushes, you got your fucking whatever else. 
none of those really move the needle for me. So then it's like, part of me is like, does this really do, does this really change much for me? But then bringing in kind of what Europe and what the, the um, European Union is um, kind of concerned about, or not the European Union, the UK actually. So not the European Union, right? Mm -hmm. um, the UK Competition Markets Authority, the CMA, their whole thing is we don't like this because in the next you know, X number of years, making Call of Duty and all these other companies on like the only real cloud gaming platform right now is going to unfairly kind of paint the market for cloud gaming, which is a, 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 a piece of the industry that is growing a lot right now. And that is interesting to me because there's, you know, way back before we did this, this podcast, when Sony spent, I, I don't remember, but it was over a billion dollars on a, a company called Gaikai. And that it was to, they're a cloud gaming company. And then we just like never really heard much about that. Like it, they never really made a splash like Xbox cloud um, gaming has. And not to say that they can't still, but Xbox has been so loud about their X cloud and all that stuff that, yeah, I do wonder if, you know, they say for the next 10 years, Call of Duty will not um, be exclusive to Xbox. I doubt at the 10 year mark, they're like, all right, it's ours now. I mean, the amount of money that they're going to make in 10 years, mm -hmm. it, it probably would be silly for them to, to change that. But I do wonder what video games look like in 10 years. I, I assume there's still going to be an Xbox, a PlayStation, a Nintendo. There might even be an Ouya too. But I hope so. I hope so. But ultimately, like, I wonder how big cloud gaming will be in 10 years. And if, and if that is the thing, and if that is, if, X, if Microsoft is that ahead of the curve on cloud gaming, I think that's where the real, I, I think the, the CMA is, is, is maybe onto something with that, mm. with like what that could end up doing down the line. But I ain't no you know, business guy. I think it's, I, and so I definitely think like that this, with this deal going through, I definitely think I'm going to end up nailing at least one of my predictions this year, which was there will be a certain number of games that will have the Microsoft logo on it when you boot it up on your mm -hmm. PlayStation. Mm -hmm. sure. So we, we live in this weird world now in which like how many Sony first, like Sony games, you know, how many of those games can you play on your Xbox? Hmm. There's got to be at least one of them. I would think. And but then you, not then you not as many like, as Xbox. So like, how fucking weird would that be if you were to go to a theater, right? You go to the, your local Regal theater, and you go to watch Marvel, a Marvel movie, right? You're gonna go watch Avengers 19 or whatever the fuck they're mm -hmm. on at this point, mm -hmm. and then it boots up and it says like an AMC film, and you're like, what the fuck? Like that's how like it's unprecedented. This is sure. un. Un, like i mean they're don't get me wrong like at the same time you also probably probably had a, a overlap at a certain point where there were still sega games yeah i was about to say the only thing i can think of is sega that's the, like yeah so and don't get me wrong we already have some microsoft games like um minecraft i think is, mm -hmm. is one i don't know if there's really any others right now but like there another are a few one, others like, but microsoft but, yeah. bought out moyang and it's interesting and if you really look, I, I guess the thing is, if you look at like big release games and, and you start thinking about these like huge games that are also multi-plat, they're done by a big company. It's like Doom. And um, I mean, shit, what was it? Uh, Deathloop had the Microsoft logo on it. Yeah. Um, if you look at, uh, you know, you play Minecraft on your your PlayStation, guess what? It's going to fucking show you the Microsoft logo on it. And it's, I think, that level of, like, creeping over that, I don't know, just makes me a little bit unsettled to be well, like, Sony's having to pay Microsoft money to have these games. Like, there's no, like, if you buy it digitally, and then with the idea of, like, hearing that, like, there's a potential chance that Starfield will not even be a physical release. <laughs> right, right. That like we start getting into more of this where like are we're starting to now cut out discs and what happens if like what happens if say you're playing digital, you're playing Call of Duty, whatever the fuck that game is coming up on that border, right? Now, let's say Microsoft does decide to back out the last minute. 
And they're like, yeah, you know what? 10 years is up. But guess what? Fuck you. We've outspent Sony. That was their whole plan. We have documents that show that. And then they're just like, Sony doesn't want to play ball anymore because of it. And they're like, hey, guess what? If you own this game digitally, you just own the license. You don't own the game. Sure. Get lost. You now lose access because this company doesn't want to play ball with us. And then I'm just sit- I'm sitting and I'm like, how the fuck? And the only way I think that you can look at this is if either A, you have the, like expendable money that you can have all of the consoles and you don't give a shit. Or B, you are a, a, a certain console pony. And then in that world, you don't care because you're still getting what you want out of it. But like, it just feels wrong to me. Like, could you imagine going to a baseball game? You go to an Atlanta Braves game. And it's like Atlanta Braves brought to you by the Colorado Rockies. <laughs> Let's go. Like, like what in the fucking world is this doesn't happen anywhere else. But but right here, right now, we are experiencing something. I don't think in, there's there's never been this before. I wonder, though, you've made the point about Xbox games or rather Microsoft games being available on PlayStation. There have been, um, you know, like Deathloop. Launched as a PlayStation exclusive and then eventually went to Xbox, but I mean, it was it was owned by Microsoft the whole time. But I wonder if as Xbox continues to push cloud gaming and PlayStation has no choice but to 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 start competing, right? Like in, in with the cloud gaming market, they they have the Project Q that's going to be a a glorified uh, remote play device. There's already if you have a PlayStation Premium. Uh, account you can stream certain games on there like they it's just they've not made as much of a splash with streaming as uh, or with cloud gaming as as xbox has but i wonder if there is a world in which like on the steam deck right now i can play xbox uh game pass games on the raj asus whatever the fuck you can play game pass games what if there's a world in which you can also at some point play PlayStation games, stream PlayStation games. If if they come out with a with a cloud competitor, and then now all of a sudden there's this weird nebulous, like in between console where you can play anything on it, but I mean maybe not everything, but maybe a, a Last of Us is still going to be exclusive, like how Starfield is still exclusive. Like maybe there's still going to be that, but I don't know. I I wonder if there is a future in which not that consoles go away by any means, but if there starts to be more cross pollination between them by way of cloud gaming, I don't know. So, you know, I, I see, I see where you're coming from there. I guess my thing is, is like the gamble that Sony has to make to be able to try to catch up to Microsoft at this point is very different than the gamble that Microsoft had to make to catch up to Sony at this point. Because as we address the price differential between companies, like their their evaluations are drastically different. Drastically different. I mean, that's what like less than Sony is like less than ten percent the size of Microsoft, and or maybe so like just around ten percent. What we just did, and I think that's the thing too, is like we we essentially just took like you have like it's almost like if you just look at corporations like company wise, and you put both up, and I'm not sitting here trying to defend Sony being like Sony's some tiny little small mom and pop shop. It's not, but like if you put them up against, you know, fucking Microsoft, it is like having a mom and pop shop sitting next to a Walmart. You know, they're four point four percent the size of Microsoft in valuation. So that is like a David Goliath situation. So basically, what the FTC just did was they were like, "All right, we'll hear this. We'll hear this." Okay, and it's Goliath on the stand. And what they do in turn is they look at David and they take away his slingshot. And they're like, no, 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 no. Goliath has the uh, you have an unfair advantage because Goliath doesn't have a slingshot, but you do. And you're like, okay, like this kind of how it feels, man. Like, and, and I'm not like, look, and like I've said before, at the end of the day, if it all shakes out, it is what it is by the time anything probably goes to shit i'll have arthritis bad enough that i can't play a fucking video game again join the family maybe yeah man and so like who knows it it probably won't matter in the grand scheme of things to me but i guess just if i'm looking at this in terms of like and i think i saw someone say this and it was like it's like you know 
it, looking at this console war, it's like watching two people suck off, you know, mil- these huge corporations on both sides. And it's like, if you really put the numbers together, like it really isn't like that at all. Like sure. it is like we really like Microsoft has the money that if something fails, it's not like the end of the world for them. But like, not that like if Sony fails, like has like tries to launch something and it fails, like it's not the end of the world. But like if Sony has two bad console cycles that really underperform, like what does that do to Sony? Sure. Because, like, look at Microsoft. They, out of all of theirs, they've only had one successful console. Yeah, on on paper, yeah. And so, but they're fucking shrugging along. They're fucking buying out, you know, almost $70 billion worth of a massive company. Yeah, another, uh, something that I'd never thought of until all of these billions of dollars discussions, Activision Blizzard is 63% the size of Sony. So, like, I mean, that's more than half of Sony's value is what? microsoft bought and like just okay so if we're if we just completely remove the names from this equation and you're talking about like two competitors in a business ecosphere that are vying for certain properties and you're like hey this is what we're setting up is this right here and this company is going to buy this company is in and you're going to try to defend this huge company that this is okay. Like, I don't think if you remove the names from the equation, I don't think you can make a valid argument. Yeah. It, it, yeah, no, it's tough. Um, Nick Speaking in the chat. Of fucking tough, man. Got a fucking, you can't see it. Ticket master email. Ooh, fucking blows Oof. my fucking um, balls. Nick says, you guys know me. I want my physical box. I want to read the small paragraph on the back of the box. I want friends to come over and see my collection. I don't want to turn on my console so that people can see my collection. I know everything will go digital. It feels that way. But that is just going to push away gamers like me. And now I'm reading this one live on the show. I haven't actually read this one already. Based on what you guys are saying, plus the court statement, sounds like this is a monopoly, but the court just said, well, that's 10 years away, and they will do cloud. Yeah, I don't know. It's It's... I think there is still a lot of, we're kind of speaking objectively in a lot of ways. I do think there is still something to be said about Microsoft, even though as a company, they are so much bigger in terms of what they have earned as Xbox. And I don't know the value of Xbox, but when you consider like a lot of this, like they've been in all of these different court hearings talking about how they're, in third by a mile between them, Nintendo and PlayStation. And, and that's true. So like there is part of it is like, it's like, you know, to bring the David and Goliath analogy back, it's like there is Goliath, but I guess technically what we're talking about is like his arm in a way, like because Microsoft is so much bigger than what Xbox is. So that is where it also just makes all of it like, kind of hard to really pin down in a way yeah, i guess okay i guess my my one issue with that statement patrick if you would oblige i would love to oblige i would love to do a lot is that if we say that if we say well if you look at how small xbox is in comparison to microsoft then xbox still just spent 60 what 66 percent of their competition's worth on not like some huge thing or i mean it's a huge thing but not like some like like i don't know how to explain it but basically like we're saying that like it's like bowser jr is using bowser's like money money to buy (laughs) to Uh, fucking enter into the the human trafficking ring to pick up daisy and peach yeah i'm just saying i think we cracked it yeah it's um you know final final thoughts on this patrick I don't think we'll see full ramifications of like this deal for a while. Like it'll be several years before I think we really start to see um, the full blown ramifications of like what this means. Um, I guess for me at the end of the day, like this isn't a win for anyone. And I'm tired of people trying to act like it is or that this is a consumer's first thing. Like we're still ignoring the fact that Microsoft very much in their document and emails is not consumer first. Microsoft also just raised the price of, of Game Pass. So like they are starting to to do in and we get to a point, right? 
And I think people will start to see it won't be immediate. It'll be down the line. It'll, it'll probably five to seven years where we will start to finally see like the actual impact of this. Um, I don't like the argument that Xbox is just trying to catch up with Sony. Like Xbox during the, th- the, the 360 days was fucking crushing Sony. Sure. And but sure, like, there was like the, the red ring of death, but like, honestly, who fucking cares? They were still selling a second console or a third console in some instances. Yeah. So yeah. they weren't doing bad, you know? It didn't ruin their reputation. They had a bad console cycle with the Xbox One. And yeah, they got far behind, but that was their own fault by not being able to like put their talent where it needed to be. And um, I, I will say this, like, I'm like I said before, I'm worried about the ramifications of like what Sony does to hit back Uh, because I think that's going to be the first like this is the first blow, but it's always the second punch that gets caught. Right. So my dad always told me it was like, if you get if you're in a fight with a kid at school, don't hit back because the first punch no one ever sees is the second punch that everyone does. And that second punch will be Sony. And that second punch is when everyone's going to get really upset about this. And the truth is, this is, it will be a full-blown retaliation move. It will not be f- consumer-friendly. Sure. Not that this really was either. Um, and then we're just going to have to deal with this as our new life now. The precedent's right. been set. You can't stop it. Yeah, my I think I do. I won't be surprised if over the next several months, because we probably won't really see much, even though like when when they bought Bethesda two or three days later, they dropped like half of their catalog on Game Pass. I don't think we're going to see that for Activision Blizzard so quickly. They've been very loud recently that Diablo 4 is not going to be on Game Pass. I, I think eventually it will. And I think event, like I'm pretty sure Call of Duty is going to end up being on Game Pass. They're they not going to make it. Yeah, they're not going to make it. I don't know if this year's will. I mean, it probably will, but. Oh, 100%. Um, but they're. Um, so like in a way, having Game Pass will only be more valuable because there's going to be more games on it. There's going to be more um, games from different companies on it. Big companies that, you know, if you're, if you're a Call of Duty player and you already have an Xbox, you're now saving 70 bucks a year. Yeah. You don't have to, you're not gonna have to buy that every year anymore. Um, so there will be, I think at a glance, things that seem pro consumer for sure. I, I, I wonder And this, you know, in a way, isn't necessarily relevant to the podcast, but like, I wonder what this precedent sets outside of gaming for other big tech acquisitions. Like, I like in the TV space, in the film space, like Warner Brothers has already been doing a bunch of shady shit. Like, is that that that's my and like to go back to Nick's comment earlier about the chat, like we've been seeing for the last six, seven months, the shit that's just been disappearing off of um off of streaming shows like arrested development where like certain seasons never had a physical release so like those kinds of things were like yeah it's uh, that's what i'm more concerned about personally um than the gaming stuff but but we're gonna see i mean this as we kind of alluded to at the beginning of this story it is technically the ftc lost in america but i'm sure this story is still gonna have legs for a bit like we're so we'll be back around the block with this story in some capacity um i'm sure but we're just gonna have to wait and see came in another mm-hmm. thing we're gonna have to wait and see for is a black panther game really real mood shift here mm. um i'm pulling from tom ivan at vgc mm. electronic arts we call them ea brother, brother has announced that a black panther game is in development at recently established internal studio cliffhanger games sidebar you remember the movie cliffhanger starring sylvester stallone yeah of course dude the, with the fucking napalm yeah, we had that, that on movie? Laserdisc. <laughs> is that the same movie that had the napalm? What was the movie with the napalm? Point, hmm. Not Point Break. Not Dante's napalm. Peak. I'm naming all the movies you love. Uh, I mean, I feel like napalm was probably in a Rambo. I want to say Zach Galifianakis was in it. Hold on, keep talking. All right, you go find that. As previously reported, the studio was formed in 2021. Came in? Yeah. And is led by Keevan. Keevan, I said. <laughs> Kevin, that name is Kevin for those of you following at home. Kevin Stevens, that's where I got the even from, Steven. Kevin Stevens, 
my brain is melting. Who was boss of Warner's monolith during development of Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor and Middle Earth Shadow of War. In addition to leaders from those games, Cliffhanger's team includes veterans of franchises including Halo, God of War, and Call of Duty. All franchises owned by Microsoft, by the way, according to EA. The original third-person single-player Black Panther game is being developed in collaboration with Marvel Games, you think? Quote, we want our game to enable players to feel what it's like to be worthy of the Black Panther mantle in unique, story-driven ways, and we want Cliffhanger Games to empower everyone on our team as we collaborate to bring this amazing world to life. They go on to say, it's going to be a rich sandbox, blah, 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 all that stuff. I know we've talked about this show or on this show rather came in your kind of general um, jadedness mm. on Marvel as a whole IP from the amount of movies and shows that have been coming out. Does a Black Panther video game do anything for you knowing that it's, you know, potentially from the same people as like the Shadow of War games? No, nothing. Honestly, I didn't like shadow of mordor or shadow yeah. of war that i mean i will that might be a benefit here because it, i mean they just worked on it that doesn't mean that this game is going to necessarily be anything like that um but um but yeah i i don't know i'm I, this i'm a little confused by it if i'm being honest because remember a few months ago we had that story about of the amy hennig game that's like captain america and black panther yeah and that, not that, that, there, not that yeah. there can't be two black panther games not that there couldn't be two captain america games it just feels like strikingly similar or like shockingly similar that there's just a, like a different black panther solo ip game but I, I mean i love the character i love the ip i like first person or sorry uh third person action story driven games so like it's checking all my boxes mm -hmm. so we'll see i mean yeah i don't not know man. See this game for at least five years though yeah i i just i mean i just like feel kind of like obviously i'm very excited about marvel's spider-man because i know what i'm getting you know sure sure and i think that's what's different is like i don't know what i'm getting with this and honestly i i don't know like i'm kind of just tired patrick i'm sure. just tired we just need to bun, bun by the way the movie i was looking for was vertical limit i don't know why <laughs> i had zach galifianakis in it he was in a movie called out cold though that was a snow film this movie has chris o'donnell scott glenn bill paxton my personal friend bill paxton the late uh, bill paxton. it also has one of my personal favorite actors of all time ben mendelson ben mendelson i fucking love ben mendelson i like him too yeah vertical um, limit guys you should go check it out it's they're on top of k12 and, and i'm pretty sure there's napalm involved and it's pretty how about that cool i think movie, you know guys. i think i've seen vertical limit yeah i've definitely seen vertical limit. i mean, dude, it's like it was like right around the same time as dante's peak yeah you know it's like that big like you know movies like that you know yeah uh Bill do you Paxton, remember that time that, do you remember that time that we did trasher pass and you created a fake movie that was called like david's hairline or something like that <laughs> i bet it was just dante speak yeah <laughs> absolutely fucking and i won you do okay no, 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 no. that was um it's contentious yeah looking for a rematch on that one well we'll see um but yeah so keep your eyes out on that if if that sounds interesting to you but i mean it's it's gonna be a while mm -hmm. it's gonna be a while you know what's not gonna be a while patrick <laughs> originally i must have had a um <laughs> I must have had some sort of a when I was creating the show uh, kind of agenda. I must have had some sort of um, nice little segue here because the headline I have for this next story is just speaking of incoming. <laughs> Baldur's Gate three is going to let you fuck a bear. Well, a druid in bear form. Came in. I'm yet again pulling from IGN but uh, and Wesley Yinpool at IGN. Baldur's Gate 3 developer Larian, Larian, not sure how you say that, probably Larian, has teased some unusual romance options in the upcoming fantasy role-playing game. Spoilers for Baldur's Gate 3 ahead. I mean, they announced it, so I feel like the game's not even out yet, and you're, they're already spoiling their own game, so like it must not be that big a spoiler. It's true. One character Baldur's Gate 3 fans have had their eyes on throughout the game's early access period is the Druid Halzen. I don't know if Liz McLean's in the chat, but I, Liz, you need to look up uh, Halzen because if people are lusting over him, I'm sure you're fucking ready yeah, for it. He fucking looks like a hockey player, baby. Halzen is an NPC and potential companion who can be rescued from a prison, but player cards right in Halzen can be so much more. 
literally as a druid house in contemporarily wild shape they call it into a bear and he does this during a romance cutscene larian showed off the furry encounter during a panel from hellstream mm. uh, that you can see in this tweet video below which i did not bring yeah. in an interview with ign larian boss sven vinky Vinky called Baldur's Gate 3's bear sex scene, quote, hilarious. Every single person who's seen it is like, oh my God, but it's funny. <laughs> what do you think a bear's <laughs> penis looks like, Patrick? I, I mean, we might find out. Um, Wesley Impul goes on to write, buff, quote, daddy, Halson, is perhaps the most sought after NPC for romance within the Baldur's Gate 3 community. Fans have even data mined the game on the hunt for voice lines and assets that hinted he'd be a romance option. Now they need wonder no more. Quote, have you ever considered the joys and pleasures of sexual Congress with a wild-shaped druid? Added lead writer Adam Smith, because at Larian, we have and ultimately landed on the side of giving the people what they want, tender, consensual romance with a man temporarily transformed into a grizzly bear. Adam Smith, you need help, friend. Okay, here's my thing. What? 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 I want to read that quote again. Have you ever considered the joys and pleasures of sexual congress with a wild-shaped druid? Because at Larian, we have and ultimately landed on the side of giving the people what they want, tender, consensual romance with a man temporarily transformed into a jizzly bear. A jizzly bear. <laughs> Sorry, grizzly bear. <laughs> no, it's a jizzly bear now. If you're me. fucking a bear, it's now a jizzly bear. Patrick. What? What? Do you think? Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm listening, brother. That they went on Amazon. They went to the weird part of Amazon where you can find these weird, like, sex with werewolf, sex with Sasquatch books, you know? I know. I'm oh, you know. <laughs> Trust me, I've seen him, brother. You're living and in the woods now, brother. You know better than most. They're like, hey, let's get this this person. I'm not going to gender this person because I don't necessarily sure. know what no, the gender of, of the person who writes that book that's is. But they're like, let's get this person. Obviously, they can write a sex scene about fucking an Hannibal. Yeah. I think it's one thing we need to remember, folks. A bear is still an animal, even if there's a human inside of the bear. <laughs> and in this case, there's two humans inside of a bear at some point. Yeah. True. Also, True. pigs have like a corkscrew penis. Yeah, just as a separate quick fact. Quick fact. Just as a, quick fact with Cayman. Quick fact with Cayman. Pigs have corkscrew penises. Have still you ever curious considered... what a bear penis looks like, and I'm not going to Google it. Have you Not ever gonna considered do the joys and pleasures of sexual Congress with a wild shaped druid? Because at Larian, we have and ultimately landed on the side of giving the people what they want tender, consensual romance with a man temporarily transformed into a jizzly bear. I just I love that they use the word tender. Yeah, yeah, because they, they want you to know. And the, I guess the video, if I had pulled that into the show, um, have you not watched the video yet? I haven't. It's funny as shit. Is it, it is okay. funny. It is funny. It's funny. It is funny. However, there's nothing tender about a bear. Sure. So, Ooh. how anyway. many people? How many people, Patrick? Just humor me. Yeah. No. Oh, come on. I would love to. You're a math man. You're a numbers guy. As as I said earlier, I'm a math man. You're a little number math boy. boy. Hmm? How many people do you think are going to try to fuck a bear after this? In real life. In real life. Oh. <laughs> um, how many people are going to try to fuck a bear in real life because they played Baldur's Gate 3 in which they could have a tender, consensual romance with a man temporarily transformed into a jizzly bear? Cayman, I think... I think at least two people. Tom Hardy will be one of those two people. You know, Patrick, you know somewhere out there right now, Werner Herzog. Werner Herzog. Mm -hmm. You know he's out there. He is just chomping at the bits. Oh, yeah. Ready Jumping to make bits. a documentary yep. about this. He's already made the Grizzly Man, and the guy died at the end. Yeah. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the, the old documentary Grizzly Man, the guy True, died. I, I was going to watch it tonight. Fuck me, I guess. Werner Hertz on YouTube movies. Trust me, it made me watch it the other day. Um, 
YouTube hold, literally holds me down. Yeah. Forces me to watch Chinese propaganda. Oh, okay. Boy. That oh, happened. Um, he's chomping the bit. He's ready for the next documentary. And it sure. starts here. Sure. Tender consensual relationship. With a fucking bear. <laughs> I'll tell you what. The only bear I'm hoping to fuck is Jeremy Allen White. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who that is. He's the bear and the bear. He's the he's the, the oh character. he's Baron Bear that's his name yeah, he's, I just he's, he's Bear Baron the Bear I just think of him as what is what was his name in uh that other show he was on the, Lip Lip yeah yeah yep. Lip uh Babylon Drift in the chat cannot wait BG three fire 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 uh I'm gonna assume that's just a guy fucking a bear oof 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 mm-hmm. what he says yes. um can we so, just also address the fact that apparently there's like 380 hours of cutscenes in Baldur's Gate three. And 80 of those hours is fucking a bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, boy. That's going to um, be the longest you like Pornhub video you've ever yeah. seen. Oh, boy. It's going to be long. All right. Um, Shit. Video games, as I said on Instagram, if you if you saw that, the video games were a mistake. But <laughs> hey, we uh, we decided to get into this little hobby ourselves. Right. When do you think when do you think Microsoft's going to monopolize bear fucking? <laughs> oh, oh boy. this was a, um, the Smalley games was a mistake. That's true. Um Cayman, let's close out the show with just <laughs> yeah. some some quick updates on games that you can play on PlayStation Plus or Xbox Game Pass. This is so funny. Uh which is funny. Uh PlayStation <laughs> Plus, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. The uh nailed franchise it. owned by Microsoft. Uh free this month uh in for PlayStation Plus. Also Alan Wake remastered and Endling Extinction is Forever. And then on Xbox Game Pass, you can play GTA 5, Exo Primal, and The Cave. And there's more, but those are the ones that interested me. If you've not played The Cave, mm. this was a game from like 2010, maybe. Really nice little adventure game. Uh a little spooky. Bunch of different characters you can play as, and like they have their own little story uh, that all kind of intertwine in different ways. I re- it came out during the PS3 generation. I remember really liking that game. Came in. Uh, there's uh, there's another game that's on on uh, Game Pass right now that a friend of the show and friend of me, Amber, uh, was telling me about called Bramble, the Mountain King. It's on Game Pass right now. Apparently, if you like uh, Limbo or Inside, Ooh. but this is uh, like a take of it's like that, but like a take on like Norse mythology. Um, and she's apparently she said that it's really good. So uh, it's also on Game Pass. So um, more bang for your buck, I suppose. Let's fucking go. I'm gonna download that once we're done here. Thank you, Amber. Um, well, that's all we got for you this week. Um, let us know. Mail at spotlightgames.net, spotlight games pod on Twitter, or spotlight games pod on Instagram, TikTok, and threads. Cayman threads. Not, I've not posted a single thing on threads of spotlight games, but we're there. <laughs> yeah, let us know if you're going to be fucking the bear in uh, Baldur's Gate 3, and let us know uh, what you're playing. Let us know all the things. Mm-hmm. Cayman, where can they find you if they want to find you? Um, you can find me at the dumpster boy on twitter and you can find save trash cinema which we haven't posted an episode in a long time so uh we're we're working on getting that back like we said things have just been really busy lately uh that is coming back soon but guess what there's still like 70 episodes so if you never listened to an episode go go follow save trash cinema on everything and guess what patrick also on threads and we have one post said it says Big box offices for the birds. Get it? Ooh, look at you go. Mm. Um, you're just you're you're a little threading machine. I tell you what. Mm. What? Well, until next week. Keep fucking those bears, baby. Just keep fucking them. <laughs>